Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Sorry about the small delay, we're getting started. We're going to get straight into this now, please. Okay, so today's topic is going to be on how to put together a world class training session. Now, from being in the industry for nearly 25 years, some people are exceptionally well prepared when it comes to their one to one sessions, when it comes to their team sessions, when it comes to their one to one nutrition consultations. What I want to try and give you today is some sort of template of how you can assess your current session to see if there's areas where you can improve it. So the question is, your last training session that you did, was it an excellent session? And if I put my hand on the heart and said the last training session I did with someone, could there be areas where it could improve? Most certainly there could be. But the goal is to go into every single session and for your clients and your athletes to know that you're endeavoring to make these sessions better every single time. And to do that, a few little simple tips that we're going to follow. So number one, you need to define the expectations. So when somebody comes to your gym, maybe they've been to another gym, maybe they've been in a member in a, in a big, huge commercial gym, maybe they've been into some um, group training classes before, and they don't necessarily know what your session is going to entail, what, what gets involved in it. I, my daughter recently, she made her Holy Communion, so it's a religious ceremony over here in Ireland, big, big white dress that she had to wear and go to the church, so... We made it myself and my wife made a big deal. So I said to her, you know what I'll do? I'm going to ask her, what does she want me to do to make her day very special? And she said to me, I want to sit in the front of the car. So she always sits in the back. So for her, the, the best day was sitting in the front of the car. Now, I would never have thought about putting her in the front of the car, making her more important and um, sitting beside me in the car. So with your client, what are they expecting your, your, your training session to encompass? What is the, the feeling? What's the atmosphere? What's the rapport? What's the engagement? What, what are they looking for from the actual session themselves? And if you find out what they're, to find their expectations, then you can meet them. But if you don't know, you haven't asked a question, you haven't posed a question to your client, what are you looking for from this session? We know that they're coming to lose weight. We know they're looking to improve mobility, flexibility, and so on, the quality of life. However, Maybe the music irritates them. Maybe when the gym is full of, you know, big group sessions, maybe you're, you're doing a one-to-one -one and in the, in the gym that day, there's group sessions going on and it makes them feel a bit inferior. Maybe they don't like to train when they see themselves in the mirror. Maybe the certain exercises like remaining deadlifts or, or reverse hypers where their bum is in the air that they feel uncomfortable. But when you open the the conversation to ask your clients that it, making sure that the session is comfortable and, and you're, you're defining the expectation, that's when you can refine things to make it that little bit better. Now, I'm not saying you have to be, you know, um, to treat them like fragile people. What I'm saying is if you open the conversation to identify if there is things in the session that's not included, that they'd like to include them. Some people like to do a little bit of cardio at the end. Some people don't. Some people like to do their mobility at the end or the start, whatever it may be is. You build it in. But if you ask the questions, then you can have the conversation to make sure that your sessions are, are aligned with what they think they're going to come for. Because clients, in my opinion, they they'll talk, they'll tell you how they feel with their feet and go somewhere else. So if you open up the conversation to allow them that, that, that floor to express what they expect, a kind of personal training session or one-to-one -one session is supposed to encompass, then they'll give you the information. And that is so useful information. The next thing that I think is fundamentally important in every facility, whether you're an online coach, whether you're training in a big gym, a private gym, a more functional CrossFit gym, where you're renting space, whether you're your own gym, you have to walk through the client's journey. So when a client comes to see you as a coach, what does their journey look like? Have they looked you up on Instagram? Have they looked you up on YouTube? What's your website like? How did they make the first booking consultation? Do you know the fees? Do you know the payment structure? Do they? Do you know how they want to be communicated with? I, most of my clients, they're extremely uh, busy in their jobs. So text message is a better form of communication, not email, because they've already got enough emails. If they want me to send them some stuff, they have a separate email address that they'll give me. But ringing them on the phone is, an, is a no-go. They're not free for that. But if you walk through your client's journey and see what their journey is like, how they found out about you, what they think your training session is going to include, what they focus on. People come to my gym all the time and say, oh, where's all the treadmills? I don't have any treadmills. Now, I've got a huge area of cardio. I've got, I've got a multitude of different hit training tools, rowers, assault bikes, and so on, boxing bags, jiu-jitsu mats, and so on, but don't have any treadmills. So when someone comes, they might go, oh, you guys don't have treadmills. So their expectation of going to the gym may include a treadmill. So you're trying to educate these people of, of what actually your training session is going to encompass. But finding out what the journey is, 
when they come to the gym, what time do they come to the gym at? Is there going to be parking close to the gym? Is it going to be is it going to be safe? Is it a is it a, an industrial area where they may have to park far away from the gym and walk in an unlit area towards the gym? When they finish the training sessions, do they have to go home? Do they have to go shopping? Is there is there a, 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 do they have to shower before they go back to work? What are they going to have lunch? So knowing what these journeys is will allow you to change or to you know modify your training session to suit them. So for example, I've got a lot of friends that their gyms don't actually have showers, so the people can't shower before they go back to work. But what we've done in, in some of these facilities is we've we've taken the interval training away from those lunchtime sessions and put it in the morning session or in the evening sessions so that people aren't excessively sweaty going back to the office. We've also worked it out that if someone's training on their lunch break, you can get a meal delivery company to deliver food to the actual gym where they can take it with them when, when they leave with their post-workout shake and their lunch when they go back to the office. So they can sit maybe outside the office in the park or have you and have their food before they go back into the office. So by knowing your client's journey, it allows you as a coach to make your training session exceptional. But knowing the challenges that they have, whether they're on a school run before they come to see you, whether they're on lunch break, whether it's in the evening, whether they're gonna, they're gonna shower or not gonna shower, if the volume of people in the gym at that time, the, the volume of the music, the choice of the music, you know, the actual equipment they use when they're in the gym at that time, all these simple things will take what you see as a program of sets, reps and tempo, a much bigger picture and give a better experience. We've all been to a restaurant. I went to a restaurant recently and when I went in, I sat down the way, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the way just asked me, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> she asked me to stop coughing. She said, would you like a, a, a black or a white napkin? And I've never been asked that question before because so many people go there in different outfits and dresses and suits and so on. They actually have different napkins to give people in case fluff comes off it. Crazy question to ask someone. But when you go to a restaurant, cleaning into the bathroom, the, how you were met, you, you were greeted in the way into the restaurant, all gives you a feeling of how the actual night is going to go. Yes, the food is important. I'm not saying the food is important. And in this situation, or analogy, the training session is super important, but it's the experience, it's how, it's, how it starts, how it ends, how the interaction is, the result of the actual training session itself, the experience, the music, the heat, the, the temperature, the light, the equipment, the cleanliness, all this will give your client an exceptional world-class service, it's not purely about the program. Now, unless you're training a high-level Olympic athlete, the programs don't have to be down to 0.0001% of, of what you're looking for. Tempo, intensity, you know, rapport, safety, beneficial training, um, reduce the risk of injury and safety is, is fundamentally important. But there's a lot of wiggle room when it comes to the actual training system. But the delivery of the session will, what will make you separate you from a good coach or a good trainer to an exceptional coach to someone that comes back all the time. I talk to coaches on, on a regular basis about growing their business. And I understand social media is growing. I understand that that's how you see stuff like these webinars. But fundamentally, in this service industry, fundamentally, when you coach someone, it's your rapport, it's your engagement, it's your interaction with your client, and it's the referrals that will grow your business. As a coach, as a one-to-one -one coach, as someone that sees people on a one-to-one -one daily basis, you only, fund, you only really need about... 10, 15 clients coming two, three times a week. And that's a very busy coach. Now, obviously, there's a ceiling of how much money you can earn, how much money you can charge. But if you build a team around you of, of coaches, of trainers that are always looking to give attention to detail, to do that bit more for clients, that's what's going to grow your gym, grow your business, grow your team, and fundamentally have longevity in this industry that you won't be gone at the next day. Next um, is, the touch, is the touch point. So in that journey, along that journey, that client's journey, where did they touch you along the actual interaction? Is it your app? Is it your booking system? Is it a message? Is it a confirmation of the session? Is it a reminder of maybe a tip? Or is it a, a link of a supplement? Is it a, a link for a diet? Is it a menu that you give to someone? Is it a list of restaurants? I, I always try to get across the clients. There's always something else you can do. So for example, we've got a gym in the city center in the set, central business district in Dublin and when we tell our clients this is what I want you to do where I want you what you what I want you to eat we give them lists of restaurants that have food that's complementary to the, to the diet that we recommend rather than saying to someone you need to eat a b and c say okay well where do you go shopping okay you go to shopping the Lidl or Aldi or Marks Spencer or Dunn stores here's a list of a grocery list for those particular shopping centers are you going to order food into your house a food delivery company here's one they're recommending here's sample menus from the, for those restaurants 
Next, you're going to go to restaurants three, four times a week with these are foods that I would recommend you have if you go to a restaurant A, B and C, which is in a, a five kilometer radius of your job or a five kilometer radius from your house, whatever it may be is. But see where you touch your client in relation to your service, in relation to what, what more you can give and then support them. But if someone gets onto your website and it's 15, 16 clicks before it gets true, if it's confusing, um, somebody I study a lot with is Don Miller from Business Made Simple. And he says your website should have a, the caveman question, the grunt question. It should be easy to understand. What service do you offer? How much is it? How do I book? How do I make an appointment? How do I reach out and talk to some of uh, the staff members? So assessing your client journey, assessing the touch points, then you can assess whether your touch points could be, could be positive or negative, or is there areas of opportunity? Where on your touch points can you improve it? Can you tell people, we've got lit car parks, we've got you know, a private car park, just, you don't have to pay. When you come to the gym, there's always these spaces where you can come in. We give towels, we give water bottles, we provide protein shakes, we give A, B, and C, because we realized that when we didn't, I was a pain for clients. I used to manage a really big gym in Dublin. It was, it was Europe's biggest gym at the time. And we had two car parks. And the biggest complaint was people couldn't get into car park one, but they had to park in car park two, which was only a few meters down the road. But the fact is you're going to a gym, but that was the number one complaint. The second complaint was the showers. The showers weren't of, of the highest quality. They were more plastic and um, cubicles rather than toilet. So these are things that you ask your clients, these small touch points that you can improve them. And clients are very understanding. They understand that you may not get everything right straight away, but once you're working hard to try to improve these things, that's what we're looking for. And uh, next, what we have here is the pain points. So ask your clients in other facilities, and other gyms you've been in, what has been a pain point? Has it been being charged for a Cancelling sessions? Was it not a clear cancellation policy? Was it incorrect billing? Was it you, the sessions built up and you didn't know that this big bill was coming? Was is that you uh, you had to train in groups and you prefer to train individually? Was it the price point? Was it access to the gym? Was it the times? Was it that you wanted a female trainer, you got a male trainer? Was it that the training wasn't hard enough? Was it that there wasn't feedback system? That there wasn't a situation you could sit down and talk to some one of the trainers and say, no, I want to change this. In my facility and all our facilities, we pride ourselves in saying that if you have a problem, that's not necessarily with my training, but you can talk to one of the other coaches saying, I'd like this to improve. And we have an open dialogue. And we call it feed forward rather than feedback. I always ask my clients, well, what else can I do to make the sessions better? Is there anything I can do to, to mix things up? Would you like to maybe go with another trainer for a couple of months? Maybe focus a bit more on boxing or a bit more interval training or maybe do more calisthenic, calisthenic training. One of the things that we pride ourselves in the ISO is that we're not fixed to any modality of training, whether it be powerlifting, Olympic lifting, CrossFit, strongman training, bodybuilding. I don't care. From a rehabilitation point of view, once someone is safe and effective, we try to make training fun, we try to make training effective, we try to bring down the risk of injury, but it's enjoyable. So the modality of training should, shoot the, should suit the client's capabilities, functionality, overall goal, but also can be a little bit of fun. So it doesn't have to be so regimental. When it comes to athletes, I'm, I'm, I have a different point of view when it comes to that. When it comes to general pop for weight loss and, and, and general health, it's very blurred lines, a lot of stuff that you can do with them. But find out the pain points. What in your business, what in your training session can you improve? Is it that your, your clients are maybe run over from one session? That the first 10 minutes of your, of your PT session is, is you know, just trying to catch up, finishing off a last client, getting your new client warmed up, cleaning the station down. These will, these, these will interfere with your clients. These guys, at the end of the day, are paying a lot of money to see you as a coach. You're getting a lot of money per hour in, in, in the whole scheme of things from a, a revenue point of view. You need to make sure that 45 to 60 minutes is a, is a quality session. So, for example, if you say to someone, this is a 60-minute session, and the sessions are constantly 45 minutes, well, then they're going to say, well, I'm actually getting 15 minutes taken off my session with a waffle at the start and the end of the session. I want to get the quality from the work. However, if you define your expectation to start saying, it's a 60 minute slot, but it's a 45, 50 minute session. It just allows us to, you know, to, to close down from the last client and set up you for the next session. Then they're aware of that, then they won't get a bee in their bonnet. But identify, to have good neighbors, you need good boundaries. So making sure you know the specification of the training session, so does the client. They know the time allocation, they know the booking systems, they know the cancellation systems. It doesn't have to be so 
regimental that it's like a, it's, it's, it's a, a 150 page document however it there needs to be transparency you need to know what the, the setup is and they need to know otherwise there will be confusions and gray areas that's when people get bees in the bonnet identify your pain points and see what you can do to make sure everyone knows what the actual setup is going to be, what the setup of the training session is, the booking systems, and if there is pain points, identify them fast, rectify them immediately, and constantly be on the lookout, because these are the things that will niggle on people, and then just won't come back to you, and they won't refer clients on to you. Next, we have the start at the end. So I really concentrate when, if, if my wife rang me on the phone and she said, hey, I know where, how she said, hey, if she was happy, if she's hungry, if she was horny, I don't know, you'd know from one word. So when you engage with your clients, your atmosphere, your, your eye contact, your hand movements, your, your energy will feed into your client. And remember, these guys may have and be at the start of the day, might be the lunchtime of the day, might be the end of the day. A few of the things that we try not to talk about in the gym is we don't talk about religion, we don't talk about politics. Because when we bring that into the gym, it brings down a negative environment generally, and we ban COVID talks in the gym as well. So when you start off a session, start off with a session with enthusiasm, with energy, with, with focus, with positivity for what's going to go on in the session. You don't have to be screaming in their face to start, start, start off, but engage them, get them motivated into the session. And as the session goes on, obviously, you need to peak your intensity and your coaching to align with the training system that you're doing. Then at the end of the session, try to finish off with something a little bit of fun, a little bit of a novelty, maybe a little bit of laugh you know, reconfirm the two or three nutrition points they're going to do, maybe confirm the next session, see it on Monday at seven o'clock, great session today, let's really focus on that mobility and your water intake. Have a great day, maybe walk them out to the car, but finish off on a nice setting so that person leaves. They don't have to be annihilated, they don't have to be uh, killed in the gym. However, I do like people to have, you know, feel like exhausted from working hard in the gym, that they're getting the results from coming to see you as, as an expert professional coach. But how you start a session and how you, how you, how you finish a session will really, you know, tie things up nicely. At the end of the day, you're performing. Like, I'll be honest with you, people know, not necessarily know how to train, but it's the accountability of having that coach to oversee your technique, to oversee your, your, um, effort, the weight selection, the tempo, that's that's what we're there for. But it's much more than that. You can go and listen to any CD or any download on Spotify or any musician. People are still going to go to concerts. People are still going to go to Glass of like was on last night to listen to someone live. And that's what you do. You need to, you need to perform. You need to engage and you make sure you, you personalize the training session. You, you change to suit that person. But you listen to them. You give them feedback. And it's not all overwhelming. It's not a multitude of angles and biomechanics and most contractions every single set every single set maybe one or two things maybe try to learn the language of how they like to be you know coach maybe you poke them maybe you uh, you know stimulate them maybe you know you use language people uh, kinesthetic learners you, you know people learn in different ways but knowing how to coach your client and your client getting better results and try to finish on something that they they're improving whether it be more jumps or more meters or more repetitions or more repetitions or longer time and attention that they feel that they're improving that's always really important that i like to get something fun that clients see themselves improving on, on, a, on a session by session basis and making sure that you wrap it up nicely and that you congratulate them on the session. You don't have to be cheesy about it, but great work, great effort, great intensity. Let's focus on this. Let's hit this nutrition. Let's hit your water, whatever it may be. Fundamentally, you're in control of your session. So whether your session went well, whether it went good, whether it went excellent, it's down to you. Your client comes in, they may be drained. They're coming to you to, uh, as a coach. So it's important that it's not just the training. It's not just the exercise. It's the experience. Experience. It's the performance. It's the whole structure together. How your clients engage, not only you, but other people in the gym, is fundamentally important. So working diligently, going the extra mile. And as we say all the time, the extra mile is never busy. What more can you do? What else can you do to go above and beyond with your clients? And that's what we're going to finish on. So in, in every session that you do, ask yourself, what else could I do to be better? Or even flip it, say to your client, is there anything that I can do to enhance our training session together? Is there anything I can do to support you more from a nutritional point of view? Is there anything from the booking point of view or the payment point of view that I could do to improve to make it easier for you? Is, it, is our mode of communication, email, text message, WhatsApp, Instagram, is there anything that I could do to make it easier or simpler for you? We're here, we're, we're, your business is evolving and in the, the personal training and in the one-to-one -one training realm, you are your business. So your time management, your booking systems is fundamental. So for you to get referrals, you need to be honest with your appointments, with your time, 
with your presentation, with the setup of the gym, everything. So when you walk into the gym, the bins, the toilets, the, the tea towels, the, the glasses of water, everything is a representation of your training session. So it just doesn't start with the training session. It's the whole thing. It's the car park. It's the entrance into the door. It's the music. It's the volume. It's the engagement with other people in the room that you need to work on that. And how you do that and how you make sure that you're contributing positively to the growth of the company and the, and the team is that you focus on you and let everyone else around you see the standard that you're trying to set and then they will match you at the same level i say this all the time when i have a course on how to be an excellent coach and trainer that on, on a team any team we all have different roles but when some people are performing at a high level and other people are dropping the ball that discrepancy is really shown so by raising the standard of what the expectation is in your facility in your training session other people will be crying out to train with you and online coaching as much as i like to do these webinars i much prefer to be in person talking to people you know, getting getting engagement, getting feedback from them, getting them feed forward so they can actually get usable tips that they can they can put into their practice straight away. So working every single time. I was talking to Dr. Ken Kanakin, who was running Swiss with um, Elite FTS over in Ohio. If you look at the upskill yourself, guys, I strongly suggest you get to that seminar. It's going to be the end of August. And I was telling him that I've been working really hard on working on my presentation skills and he messaged me back as his own. You're already one of the best presenters that we have. The fact that you're going back to the drawing board to upskill yourself in presentation skills just shows you that you're, you're a never ending student. And that's what it is in, in the coaching world. Yes, you can have to work on your biomechanics, your, your training, your you know, understanding of muscle anatomy and so on. And that is fundamentally important to keep up with the research. But it's how you coach, how you implement, how you engage your clients, how you grow your business, how you manage your business, how you scale your business is what's going to keep you in this industry. Unfortunately, I've got lots of colleagues that are exceptionally knowledgeable coaches, but they're actually delivering their coaching service, delivering their training service. The, the match isn't there. We're working on it on a day-to-day -day basis getting feedback from your clients, rehearsing it. Every session you do is an opportunity for you to improve, to upscale yourself, the people on your team, the people in your facility, and to grow your business. So thank you so much, guys, for that. Hopefully, I'll finish on time. If you are interested, what we're going to be running is a coaches training camp towards the middle of July 16 and 17. It's three training sessions a day. There's a lot of presentations that are given online that you can watch at your own time. So if you are interested, check that out on onlaceeducation.com. Other than that, guys, thank you so much and have a great weekend.